And that was when Tanjiro died in the story. Oh my god, that's gonna leave a mark. <laughs> that's not gonna do it. That's not the tool for the job. This damn kid. <laughs> Hate you. Bond these nuts. Both of the heroes fighting in this forest right now are swordless. When your tools are gone, who are you on the inside? What do you have left? What are you drawing? Sometimes the things you think are your strengths turn out to be flimsy. All you're left with is yourself. And who are you in those moments? This is a bloody one. Episode 19, Hinokami. That's gotta be a humbling experience on multiple levels. Yeah, being near death and witnessing Gyu. And he looked bored the whole time. <laughs> the sparkles combined with the abs. It's an image. It's a visual. Unimpressed. Mismatched Tauri. You've hit his radar. This is like his form of respecting people. But yeah, he like doesn't have any legs to stand on right now. It's funny how this crosses over with Mob Psycho. I guess probably because it's just on my mind. But every person is incomplete and every person has glaring holes in their disposition. Or maybe that's not it at all for Inosuke. To put it in a more positive light, everyone needs to be aiming towards something. But there's a danger in the question of like, what does that push you towards? What do you seek that you think will fill your emotional deficits? And just simply, what are you aiming for? And if you're framing your worth and therefore driving your actions towards something like power, as Inosuke is doing and Ritsu did in Mob Psycho, or as people do with money, as I mentioned in that reaction, you run one, the risk of not getting to the core of the issue, because it's a superficial thing that will get you the surface results that you want, but not address the underlying self-issue. Like, there will always be people with more power than you, and there will always be people with more money than you. For any criteria you list, if you lean too heavily on those things, you end up risking being derailed by there inevitably being someone who can take your place, or can defeat you. That being said, I feel like if done the right way, it can be a really powerful force. Like, there's something magical about having a chip on your shoulder. If it is something you put behind you and gives you a boost towards things that actually have value. Like, there's sort of no gain in life without acceptance of some underlying truth. And one of the best pathways to truth is action, because the world will tell you exactly where you are and what it is. And lying to yourself only goes so far because of the amount of cognitive dissonance that forms. So if you can use that darkness as energy to push you forward towards a pursuit, as long as you're not under the delusion that that pursuit is going to be the thing that fixes the problem you're having and see it more as a way to meet the world and meet yourself and cultivate truth and value, then it can be something really powerful. You know, like if you're defeated in some way and that drives you to some kind of emotional hell, becoming stronger or becoming better in that criteria is not by itself going to make you invulnerable to that kind of thing. What will though is the character you build pursuing those things like hard work, discipline, humility, awareness, compassion, passion, eliminating weaknesses. So Inusuke and his dynamic with the world and Gyu is an interesting one because it's pretty clear that it doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter if he's stronger than Gyu. He's never going to be satisfied with that. But that also has been a driving force for this whole experience and the awakening he's having, which is largely people-based. And as a surprisingly intuitive person, he's going to absorb the things of goodness that are there. And his desires and values are going to transform slightly to be something a little bit less based on competition, if that makes sense. He's going to become more of a team player. It, what, it wasn't? I could not tell. I was sure that that was one of the 12 Kizukis. I think we all assumed that just because of how powerful he was. And because he seems like the boss of this mountain. And we know there's one here. <laughs> he was like, interestingly merciful in his way. He keeps showing his compassion. So he needs to hang it in there and breathing. Don't give up. You ever get really blackout drunk? <laughs> You just focus on your breathing, like every breath feels like it's the only thing keeping you on the earth. It's just a bullet? Is she putting, out, putting him out of his misery? Don't worry, you'll be with grandfather soon. Oh, thank god. <laughs> She's like the emotional warmth to use unaffected boredom and coldness. Probably make a great pair. Well, everything's working out for everyone except for <laughs> Tanjiro, slashed and swordless. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it has. Believe it. <laughs> this kid just has a face that you want to punch. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> We're all disappointed in you. <laughs> you have that special black sword? <laughs> it would be pretty awesome if you just <laughs> destroy someone with this sword anyway. But you can't really get close. This is a long-range battle. You piss him off with that Bonds talk. Why did he take it so personally? <laughs> when you lose a philosophical debate, and you hold it in your heart forever, and become murderous, kill people with your spider threads. Wait, what the what? 
<gasps> oh, she can regenerate. It's cool. Well, she got really sliced up, though. She got really... Wow. She's still in one piece, amazingly. Okay, alright, okay. Alright, she can recover from this. That's a bond right there. That's a bond they've forged, not about their blood exclusively. You would never do that, and also nobody would do that for you. She's more than a sibling. A forged bond. I feel like she got out easily. How powerful those threads have been established to be. Yeah, there we go. Damn, the Tanjiro just defeated this dude with the power of friendship and family. That moment when you have a deep introspection and then immediately discard it. He's like, I want that kind of familiar bond, but not with you. Sorry. Am I doing it right? Am I familying right? Oh, oh no. Wait, she's still alive? This is an abusive and toxic relationship, obviously. Boya. 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 Good over here, Boya. Boya. I knew it was going to involve Nezuko. This guy's not getting it. He's just not getting it. And she will love me the way that she loves you? Is that the, that the thought? That's not... doesn't track. More of the same. Oof. You know, this is a really crazy and extreme example of something, but it's not unreal. Speaking of grasping at things to fill emotional holes and that not working out. People's insecurities create the very hell they're trying to escape from. For example, people who haven't established certain fundamental areas of self-worth and self-respect will have trouble believing that other people can value them. And so, in a desperate attempt to soothe their anxious soul, they turn to tactics. You know, they turn to manipulation and fear because they can't let go and trust that people will be there for them without those things. And of course, that creates the very situation that they are afraid of because even the kindest, most patient, tolerant people will get wise to that eventually and will be out. Anybody who's established their own idea of self-worth will be out. And the people left behind will be those very willing to do the same kind of abuse, but maybe more. This often goes tightly hand in hand, not only with an insecurity, but with a, a weakness or character flaw. Like, people who are untrustworthy will not be able to believe that other people are trustworthy. And so they will resort to lying as their means of maintaining the things that they have. But that distrust can only be a negative, because people who actually are trustworthy get no reward for their trustworthiness and have no incentive, therefore, to be trustworthy or to stick around. And people who are not trustworthy have no problem participating in that game and one-upping the distrustful actions. And so through relationships, people spiral deeper and deeper into their own flaws. This very punchable kid has no concept of being able to get what he's looking for through letting go, through letting other people be who they are and him becoming a better person. And so it's going to be this tight fist that just crushes everything of value that he possibly could have. And on another side of it, very sadly, people that you can dominate through manipulation sort of lose value because it was never what you wanted in the first place. What you wanted was love. And you know on some level, deep down at least, that that control is not love. And so you're still unsatisfied. And obviously to the viewer, it doesn't matter if Nezuko fills that slot or not. It's not going to be anything close to what she has with Tanjiro. So I'm like really sitting this pissed off. Yeah, this cuts deep for Tanjiro. Family guy that he is. Right, exactly. You just riled up like the most dangerous part of Tanjiro. I'm gonna cut his head off with his bare hands. I believe you can do it. Oh, he's the 12th Kazuki. Interesting misdirect there. Oh, we actually got a backstory before a death. <laughs> So far, so good. Right, older brother. He knows that. So he's more powerful than the father. He just yanked Nezuko? Now we are brother and sister, and she loves me. I did not at all care about that. This is actually really powerful leverage. She's disposable. I'm running in with no plan. He's flustered. He's like off balance more than usual. Oh, that. For some reason, that felt. 
A lot more personal than the spider webs. Yep, as we expected. I'm amazed he got that far though. I guess he let him. Can you cut him with his own threads? Well, there goes that idea. <laughs> Out the window. It's a lower five, Fofuzuki. <laughs> it's so absurd if he expects that to be a thing. It's all about role, it's all about structure. That's for sure. There you go. This is back to Tanjiro. Back to normal Tanjiro. Which is pretty amazing given this, the circumstances. We still haven't seen his final form. It got interrupted by Tree. Let's get that water extension. Oh damn, he summoned a water dragon. There you go. It was the breathing and the focus. But can you cut his neck? Oof. I feel like he was a little bit threatened to pull out this final attack. He was playing with him before. What do you have to pull out of you, Tanjiro? No, that's not it. That's not the one. There you go. There you go. Reflect. Reflect and dig. Dig deep. Tree branch and tambourine. How did you play as a child? Tanjiro's dad. Haven't seen much of him. The breathing was way back. They have the same scar, I just realized. Oh, what the heck turned into flame? Interesting. He just like summoned a new power out of memory. <laughs> oh, damn. That's when he knew he fucked up. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, he's got the thread. Speaking of threads, there it is. It's over for you. Flashback from dad for Tanjiro and flashback from mom for Nezuko. Or contact with mom. Speaking of family bonds. No rules here. It's just them looking out for each other. Oh. <laughs> I just actually said a word. <laughs> Damn. Oh my god. That was so satisfying. I love that he did it with that, like, tiny sword. Oof. <laughs> Damn, that was pretty. Was it the end? Damn, what an ending. It's crazy. And that wasn't just a bond between him and Ezeko. It was, like, a whole family thing. It's, like, roots and history. And, like, his father teaching him how to be internally strong is what I'm taking the breathing thing to be. And the fire. It's more than a technique. It's, like, love and faith. Oh, look at this family portrait. I really like what the father said about, like, the breath being sort of independent of the cold or the elements. Something that is, one, totally internally generated, and two, a source of something like infinite strength, if that makes sense. There's something really spectacular about that as an ideal. You know, like, being this burning flame, this sun-like thing that is just totally of oneself that if tapped into and cultivated enough, will sort of override the immediate circumstances in the show in terms of fighting an enemy, but in real life, probably more like becoming fully realized or just having inner strength to weather things, weather the storm. And I like that it comes from something as fundamental as just the breath, you know, just like a, an essence of life type thing. There are feelings that come with that, like letting go, tranquility, focus, simplicity, patience, right? And the fact that it comes from a moment of what feels like pure love from his father makes it feel extra real and like ties it together with some of the themes of the episode about like forged bonds. And then also Nezuko at the same time having a similar inspiration to help Tanjiro. It looks really good in light of this terrible philosophy by Punchable Face Kid. What fun fact do we have today? It was very well-timed flashback. What powers do the rice cracker memories give you? Why well, can see we're going deeper into this family thing? This quote-unquote family. Oh yeah, he did. Well done. So that was a great episode capped off by what was a really breathtaking action sequence with the dual Tanjiro-Nezuko attack. Inspired by the thing that gives him strength. The very thing called into question by the, the enemy. It felt good. It looked amazing. Very satisfying villain defeat. It's really skillful how they make attacks feel that impactful. And then to top it off, a really great score to it, which is going to make copyright a hassle, but 
It is what it is. So yeah, that's one of the 12 Kazuki, but I guess we're not done with the family yet, or are we? Maybe we're coming to a close of this arc? Before the video ends, I gotta give a huge, huge thank you to all my patrons for all the love and support, for literally making all these reaction videos possible. And thank you to everybody who watches for all the love and kindness and great comments and insight. It's been a pretty difficult time in my life. And to be honest, one of the main things giving me goodness in my life is YouTube and Patreon. So thank you guys and I love you. For those who might not know, extended versions of videos are available on Patreon and videos are a week ahead. And there are usually bonus videos, although recently because of just things going on in my general state and also Attack on Titan being an extra video. I haven't been doing that as much, but that will resume as well as Q and A's that will resume. <laughs> so yeah, thank you to everybody. Love you guys. And special shout out to those who joined the top tier this month. Grass, Malcolm Wanzer, Chase, Prince of Darkness 18, Brisa D, Sun, and Isaiah Barnwell. Again, love all you guys. And I'll see you very soon for the next episode or Mob Psycho.